All right, in this video, I'm going to do a gateway load balancing protocol configuration. And before I get into it, let me just show you what the network looks like. So R1 is going to represent the hosts, or in this case, our LAN network. It's going to have a default gateway of 10.0.123.254 that are going to be shared between R2 and R3 in GLBP. And both of those routers have connections to the internet which R4 and R5 are going to represent our internet. So I can just say INET. And for testing, they're both going to have a loopback with the 100.0.0.1 address. So this video is going to be very light on theory. It's just going to be configuration. I'm going to try to keep it as short as possible. So let's jump right in. The first thing we need to do is configure GLBP on R2 and R3. I'm going to just do a simple configuration where I go to gig123, uh, GLBP. I'm going to set the group number as 123, and the IP address, again, is that default gateway of 123.254. I'm also going to reconfigure the timers. Uh, the default timers are 3 for hello, 10 for the hold. I'm going to configure GLBP so that our hello timer is one second and the hold timer is three second. And it was help if I put in timers there. All right. So now let's do a show run int gig one, two, three. I'm just gonna take these two commands and go to R3 and do the same. All right. So let's take a look at our two configure or verification commands. One is show GLBP brief. And this one we could see the active router for the AVG, the active virtual gateway. Remember, that's the router that responds to the ARP requests, is the local router. And then the standby router is R3. So that's for the ARP requests. We have two forwarders, forwarder number one and forwarder number two. And we could see for this MAC address of forwarder number one, R2 is the forwarder. And for this MAC address, which is forwarder number two, R3 is the forwarder. So remember with the GLBP, all the routers, or we can, especially in this network, we could have both the routers forwarding traffic. Unlike HSRP and VRRP, where only one of them can forward traffic. In this case, both of them can. So let's head over to R1. And let me just get some of this out of the way. It was... Let's trace to 100.0.0.1. And we could say we went to three first. All right, here we go. So as I do more traces, you can, you can kind of see that's a good example. The first packet here went to three. The next packet went to two. Oh, whoops, I didn't mean to do comp T. I meant to trace. Um, that one went to three first. Three. So you can see we're doing some we're doing some load balancing here. I think that's a good example. You know, three, two, three. And I just kept doing it over and over again just to kind of show you that both routers are responding, um, or both routers are actually passing traffic. So, you know, in this one, we can see the next hop was four and the next hop was five. So, with that, what's the next thing we want to do? Well, if we head over, we can see that R2 is the active router for this IP address. And that specifically is the AVG. So the Active Virtual Gateway. That's the router that responds to ARP requests. And it's also the router that assigns virtual MAC addresses to the other routers. The AVG is determined by priority. So let's head over to the interface and let's set our priority for GLBP. And we'll set it to 110, where we can see that the right here, 100, that's our default. So we'll set it to 110. 
And then we'll also set preemption. Because if we do show GLBP, we can see that by default preemption is disabled. So let's do GLBP, one, two, three, preempt. And we have to do that on both routers. Preempt. All right. So what this is going to do is we can see our priority is now 110. So if we shut down this interface, the gig 123 interface, let's just shut it down. R3 will take over. We know that as a fact, even without preemption. Let's do show GLBP brief. So now R3 is the active active router. If R2 comes back online with preemption disabled, it wouldn't take over, even though it has a higher priority. That's what the preemption does. So now if we do a no shut, and it goes back through the election process, we can see now we're back to local. And if we go to R3, and we can see the comparison, now we see the active router is R2. All right. So let's show run in gig one, two, three. We have our GLBP address, we've configured timers, we've configured priority, and we've shown preemption. Let's go over the next part, which is the AVF. So we have the AVG, and now we have the active virtual forwarder. These are routers that are actually forwarding traffic. They don't use priority to determine if they're forwarders or not. They use um, weighting. So here, let's. So in this case, we have forwarder number one and forwarder number two. These are both AVGs, and each of those AVGs has a specific virtual MAC address. Now, in order to become a forwarder, um, it has to, well, let me, let me show you before I show GLBP. Let's go up to here. Waiting 100, that's the default, thresholds lower 1 and upper 100. What this means is that if the weight of the router is lower than 1, it cannot be a virtual forward. Upper 100 means that if it is 100, then it can be the virtual forwarder. So of course we can configure this. And what we can do is, well, we'll first go in here. Let's go to int gig one, two, three. Let's do GLBP waiting. And we have a couple options. We either have interface tracking or waiting maximum value. So let's say our maximum value is 100, even though that's the default, we'll just, we'll keep it at 100. Then we set our lower and upper. I'm going to set the lower to 50, meaning that if the weight drops below 50, I'm not allowed to be an AVF anymore. And then I'll set the upper to 100. So now in order to, to change the weights, let's track an interface. We'll do a track object number one, and we'll track the interface of gig 1.25. This is this interface right here. Right, that's our internet interface. Now you could track multiple interfaces. So that's why you could do kind of interesting stuff with the, you know, you could say maybe this router has two ISP links. You could say if both the ISP links go down, then it should no longer be an AVF. But each time an interface goes down, it only gets decremented by 25. So if it gets decremented by 50, that means you know, take it out. We're just going to do this one interface is all we care about. And we're going to treat, we're going to do the line protocol. So if the proto line protocol goes down, what we'll do, and you have to go back into here to, for me to, I guess, finish that sentence, JLBP one, two, three, waiting track one. If the line protocol goes down, we're going to decrement our weight, we'll say 55. 
So if I go into 25, and before I do that, let's just do show GLBP brief. Again, we see I'm um, the active virtual gateway. And the reason being is that, I'm sorry, not virtual gateway. I'm the act, an active virtual forwarder for one, local one. And the reason being is my weighting is 100. And I'm above the lower threshold here. And I have this tracking object that decremented by 55. So if I'm in gig 125 and I shut the interface down, what we will see is my weight is now 45. I'm low because I'm under the threshold. And therefore, if we do a show GLBP brief, um, it hasn't taken it out yet. Sorry, I the timers on this one are different. The other one needs to, there it goes. Okay, so now we can see that for forwarder one, router three has taken over. So that's what the waiting does. The waiting does have another um, another use as well, but for this specific purpose, it's for the active virtual forwarder. R2, because it's weight dropped, my weight dropped, I can no longer be the forwarder. Um, now, preemption is enabled for this. So if R2 comes back up, I should take over and the delay is 30 seconds, by the way. So that's why it was, it was taking a little bit of time. So let's do 1.25. I should be able to no shut this. And now show GLBP. Now my waiting is back up to 100. And it's still listening. It is going to take a second, but while we're waiting, I just want to you know point this out that even though R2 lost its AVF status, it's no longer a forwarder, it still was the AVG. So it's important in your mind to make sure those two things are separate. AVG is determined by priority, where AVF is determined by the weighting. Two totally different things. A router can be a virt the AVG and not be an AVF as you see in this instance. And now that 30 seconds was completed, so we could see we, we preempted and we are the AVF for this um, MAC address again. Now, the last section, the last part I want to go over is load balancing with GLBP. So we saw here we were kind of going three to two to three. Um, and the reason being is let's take a look at show GLBP, and I'll just include load balancing. Um, I thought, oh, it's because it's a capital L, but whatever, we could see it here. Load balancing is round robin. This is the default. Round robin just means when an ARP request comes in, you know, host one sends an ARP request, R2 just responds with R2's Mac. The next host comes in, R2 responds with three. The next host comes in, R2 responds with two and three. And so it's basically just alternating. If there was more routers, it would go, you know, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, et cetera. It's, it's just a round robin. I guess I don't need to explain to you guys what a round robin is, but that's the default behavior for GLBP. We can change this. Um, GLBP, one, two, three, load balancing. And we can see there are three possible options. So round robin is what we are currently set to as a default. The next one is host dependent. Load balance equally, source MAC address determines forwarder choice. This means that if host number one wants to go out to the internet, it's always going to use the same forwarder. So if, if host number one is going through R2, it is going to continue doing that, you know, for as long as that host stays up. 
and it, and then host number two can go out three. Um, host number four or host number three can go out this way. Host number four can go out this way, and it always will do so. Um, so if host number one, I guess this is important to know too about these load balancing is that this is load balancing ARP. It is not load balancing based on flow. So if host number one is sending just a ton of traffic and host number two maybe just sends out very light traffic, that it's still going to load balance in this, in this way if you pick host dependent. So I guess you kind of have to look at what your hosts do, what kind of flows you have in your network to determine maybe the best load balancing for you. But the load balancing is we're load balancing ARPs, we're not load balancing flows. So host dependent might be useful though if your network has like a, um, a stateful firewall, like maybe you have one stateful firewall here and one stateful firewall here. And it makes sense that for host one, all the traffic goes out here so that the stateful firewall can send the, the flow out and then have it come back in. You know, maybe that's one option. There are other reasons you might use it, but that's host dependent. Weighted, that's the weight thing, you know, the weight we configured for the AVF, but you can see it says load balance in proportion to forward or weighted. So there is a little bit of math here. I'm not gonna go over it, but you know, theoretically, if we configured R2 to have, you know, like a weight of 200 and R3 has a weight of 100, theoretically, R2 will get twice as many ARP requests as, you know, ARP responses, I should say, as R3. Again, it's not flow-based. It is ARP-based. So basically what you're saying is R2 will have twice as many hosts. So... That's GLBP. Um, let's just take a quick look at the interface configuration just to go over. Um, one, two, three. And, you know, this is the command to enable GLBP with the IP address. We set the timers. We set the priority, which remember the priority is what determines the active virtual gateway. Uh, preempt was for priority as well. And then these two waiting things were for the AVF, the active virtual forwarders. Um, and we did have to do a tracking thing to, you know, a tracking object, not a tracking thing, a tracking object to decrement our weight. So we're 18 minutes is already way longer than I wanted to spend on this video. But GLBP is a little bit more complicated than HSRP and VRRP. So if you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below. I will in the description um, link both of those videos to HSRP and VRRP in case you want to take a look at them. Otherwise, we'll see you on the next video and thanks for watching.